This is the story of six mixed martial artists, three Canadians who will train and fight in Brazil, and three Brazilians who will train and fight in Canada. The six fighters will be teammates, Brazilians, Canadians, helping each other win through Fight Exchange. Previously on Fight Exchange. Mike's a trip. And honestly, if I didn't have someone like that, I'd probably go nuts. Woo! You guys know each other like uh, what bugs each other, what doesn't. Oh, I'm referring to a black princess over here. So you call me princess all you want, right? <laughs> Remember, Pete. What's one plus one? <laughs> you need to find this girl like next ten lines. Some big uh fake boobs. It's just like really sexist and I was really upset. Yo, Nate, you're missing out, bro. I just chopped your homegirl. Not every <laughs> black person sees my homie. Stop getting the stereotype the twisted. But well, on the whole, we're pretty cool. We bake her a lot. It's fun, though. You better expect to, uh, to see what you're made of, you know, because that's, that's what they're going to do. They're going to test you, right? That's what they are. Bruce Red, dude. Today, kind of, uh, wasn't how I wanted. And I'm just going to train harder next time. Next time, better. Uh, tomorrow, I promise. It's the morning after the Canadians were thrown into Nova Uyao's vaunted shark tank. Today, it's a wrestling class, and Kara is keen to build on yesterday's success. I love submission wrestling. It's so much fun. And yeah, I'd love to work on, you know, I'd love to work on all areas. There's always room for improvement. After the disappointment of his shark tank, Mike is confident that his world-class wrestling skills will impress the Nova Unyao team. Um, the first day training session wasn't really too great. You know, I got a little bit injured. I, you know, um, I was down on myself. Like, I'm, I'm, no one's harder on me than myself. And, uh, you know, that's what it takes to push me to the next level. So uh, I'm not, I'm not going to change that. Nate wants to seize the opportunity to sharpen his ground game in one of the world's best gyms. I want to add more to my repertoire. I just really want to be a well-rounded fighter. As I watch MMA more and I train more, I've found, I think, being a complete fighter is where it's at. Keen to show his wrestling skills, Mike works with UFC fighter Johnny Eduardo. Of all the disciplines, wrestling is often where the Brazilian fighters have the most to learn. So Mike generously offers his talent to his new teammates. They appreciate what he brings to the mix. Claudia continues to help Kara prepare to fight Aline Neri. The Brazilian she defeated earlier in her career. Across the gym, middleweight Daniel Almeida works on his impressive ground game. Daniel is a 27-year-old submission specialist, having won five of his fights this way in the first round. This is my dream, this is my life. Daniel is one of the few heavier fighters working out of Novo Unyao, a gym mostly populated by lighter fighters. Like Claudia, he will travel to Canada for a big international fight. You want to fight UFC, whatever. You want to fight Bellator, whatever. You want to fight in Strikeforce, whatever. 
I want a good money for my family. Daniel needs little motivation to fight. It's the only way he can support his family. Better money for my family, better life for my son, for my wife. Because that, I fight. <laughs> In an effort to prove himself, Mike has adopted a more aggressive attitude. not have been his fault I didn't see the actual injury but you know this guy's on the ground grabbing his knee like writhing in pain go up and see if he's okay at least eventually Mike checks on his injured teammate It's the end of wrestling class. Time for Johnny Eduardo to do his Bruce Lee impression. They train hard, but the fighters here still know how to have fun. Claudia took a shot in the eye today, but it doesn't prevent her from asking Nate about his ever-growing family. In the available moments, art school photographer Kara records her time in one of MMA's meccas. Marlon Sandro wants to know if Mike is doing better in today's workouts. Yeah. Uh, ask the coach. I trained harder today. <laughs> Yesterday, I, now I'm training. Tomorrow better, next better, better. Mike yeah. feels today's session was much better, despite having injured one of his teammates. I go, BJ Penn. <laughs> but I am mean, very handsome. It's ugly. Man. This is an ugly. Oh. It's the face, no face, face. Canada? Oh, different. Yeah, different. You ugly, me, huh? Ah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> The Canadians invite Claudia and Daniel back to their apartment for lunch. I'm just cutting up chicken like this. Nate gets some advice on his first ever weight cut. Man. How much you have to weigh to lose? Uh, right now I'm 153, I have to make 145. I'm almost there, I'm doing good. So I don't usually cut weight, so this is new for me, you know? Uh, you fight to 145? Yeah. What weight you fight? 145. Claudia reminds Nate a balanced approach to fighting is the way to get results. It's like it's everybody knows everything. I stand up, everybody knows fake down, everybody knows jiu-jitsu. So I think we have to be ready to, to do to everything on the fight. Focus more on what I need to work on, yeah, to prepare for the fight. So you start to train stand-up now, right? Yeah, I've only been training stand-up a little bit. I did a little bit of boxing before, like, just a lot of jiu-jitsu uh, for like four and a half years. And then uh, wrestling, I, I wrestled a little bit. And then um, stand-up with Mauricio, maybe like a month, month and a half. So not too much, so getting used to it, you know? A pile of chicken to start. There's like nothing on it. He's so hungry. I feel strong. The fighters head to Bandaranches Beach, where they have been invited to an MMA demonstration held by the Noguera Gym, a rival to Novo Unyao, and home to present and former world champions such as Anderson Silva, Junior Dos Santos, 
and the Noguera brothers. The Noguera Jim Star, Anderson Silva, considered by many to be the best pound for pound fighter in the world, proves he has a mischievous sense of humor. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out if it's okay for me to drink this. Uh, carbohydrates. There's a lot of carbohydrates in it. It's 32 grams of carb. It's extremely important to have someone like Kara around, and I'm glad that she's here with me because Kara's helped me a lot with this diet, which is something I'm very undisciplined with, so I'm not struggling at all with this weight cut. I have Kara to thank for that. I don't think it's going to kill you. We'll do cardio tonight anyways. Today, Mike is feeling ostracized by his teammates. I know for the past couple of days, like they've, they've been avoiding me and also been like kind of rude. And I was a little bit upset with that. So throughout the day, I kind of gave them the cold shoulder a little bit. They were talking to each other, not to me. So, you know, big deal. Um, it's okay to avoid people, you know, there's no harm done. He obviously knows that we're not interested in talking to him because of his attitude and like every other issue that's stemming from it. Like it's just basically, it's a huge ego trip for him. You have to fight with you know, all your heart, and if you don't, if you just don't care, and if you do it because you want to be like a superstar, like a legend in your own mind type thing, you know, whatever, you're not special. Not special by any means. Uh, you are training here? We're I'm training. No, 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 yeah. I'm going to fight, yeah. It was a great day. I got to meet a lot of cool people. <laughs> how, long, how long did it take you to get to the top? The higher level? The training I've been in the sport a little bit longer, right? Like, I remember when, when I was starting out and I'm like, oh my God, this is so-and-so and this is so-and-so and I was so excited to meet them and stuff. But at the end of the day, you grow up as a man. <laughs> UFC heavyweight champion Junior Dos Santos wants to greet the Canadians since his gym is hosting their fights and handpicking the opponents from their ranks. How much weight? Uh, me, I'm going to fight at 145. 145? Yeah. But I think it's I might a, go down. Was that auto division? Oh, no. yeah. Yeah, 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 but I think I might go down. <laughs> but uh, you, you should. <laughs> Jose Aldo is Nova Uniao's pride and joy, the UFC featherweight world champion. Junior Dos Santos asked me what weight I fight at, and I told him I'm fighting at 145. And he had told me, oh, so you're coming for Jose Aldo. And I said, uh, not really, but he offered to make the fight happen. So I think I might have to make the jump down to 135. I'm not really looking to fight Jose. What's her name? My name is Nate. Nate, nice to meet you. Nate. Kara. Kara. Yeah. Nate's 24 years old, and you know, you see a guy that's you know a champ, and all, all of a sudden you're all over his dick, like you're some fanboy. You know, it's like, oh my God, who are you? I want your autograph. Like, what's that gonna do for you? Okay, see you later. Bye-bye. Right. Nice to meet you. Different people, when yeah. you meet them, it's kind of like, ah, okay, this is what you're about. It was a real good experience, you know? Yeah, that was awesome. Honestly, I just want to see Anderson. <laughs> Play. Let's see. Can we see him? If people follow me around, you know, I'll sign autographs. I'll be, like, nice with them, but I don't get it. If you're a follower, you're not going to beat no one. You're not going to be better than anybody. Everyone that's invented something, or everyone that's been somewhere past somebody, or every champion that was made was different than the other one. Because if he was the same, he would never have beat him. So you gotta do your own and go your own way and pick your own path. And if you're gonna be a follower for your whole, whole life, then that's all you're gonna be. You know, you, you gotta be a leader. And that's why, I, you know, I stick up for myself and I do my own things and I lead my own path. The fighters make their way back to the apartment. It's clear that Mike is not feeling connected to his teammates. Mike was kind of just really mopey and nobody really knew what was going on with him. And if I'm down, I have my own space, I do my own thing, I recover my own, you know, that's what I'm used to. So, you know, I was a little bit quiet, a little bit to myself, I kind of avoided the others. What do you think about today, Kara? I think you get so nervous and you, then you don't know what to ask and you're like, oh, okay, that's cool, thanks, you're cool. For sure. Awesome, yeah.
<laughs> nah, it was a good experience. Yeah. Good day overall. Yeah. The fighters stopped long enough to pick up Felipe Olivieri, the third Nova Uniao teammate who will eventually travel to fight in Canada. Hey! Oh, <laughs> Felipe is a proven knockout artist, having finished seven of his opponents this way. do Rio de Janeiro, do, da cidade de São João de Meriti, Baixada Fluminense, o gueto do Rio de Janeiro. É, o primeiro contato com a luta eu tive é, no judô, tive aos 7 para 8 anos, num, num complexo cultural que tem próximo à minha casa, que é para integração, para gente que é de pouca renda e, e é para juntar as pessoas. Felipe lives more than two hours away from the Nova Uniao gym and spends much of every day traveling back and forth. Onde eu moro é meio complicado chegar onde eu treino. Demoro duas horas. Eu acordo cinco e meia da manhã para chegar aqui mais cedo por causa do trânsito, por causa da complicação e tanto para vir tanto para voltar. Eu demoro duas horas. Então já aí já eu já passo quatro horas no trânsito dentro do metrô ou dentro do um ônibus. Não importa. Expectations are high for Felipe as a lightweight fighter. His coaches and teammates believe he can be a world champion, just like his best friend, UFC featherweight Jose Aldo. E me vejo campeão de um grande evento. Eu me vejo campeão, é como é o meu sonho, eu campeão do UFC. Eu vejo que eu tenho condições. Cada dia eu estou evoluindo mais. Cada dia eu estou querendo mais e Jonas Bilharino, you know him? You never heard of him? Nate now knows his opponent is Jonas Bilharino, a Noguera fighter with a record of no wins and no losses. Nobody knows him. Felipe and Daniel have never heard of Nate's opponent. <laughs> Felipe can't resist teasing Mike unimpressed with the Canadian silence. What's up, bro? Yeah, man. Yeah, Oh, my God, bro. I didn't feel comfortable around, you know, certain people, and I didn't want to be there. You know, I just wanted my own space and do my own thing, and Daniel was in front of me, and he's like, you know, I want to go out tonight and stuff. I'm like, oh, I kind of just want to hang out on my own, you know? I want to do my own thing. You know, I've been losing my line, mind a little bit over here, and. Then he started saying to the new fighters, you know, oh, Daniel, oh, Felipe, you know, let's go out, let's have fun. And it's like he's trying to make, a, like, separate our relationship from the new fighters coming into the house as well by being like, oh, bro, let's go to the strip club together, you know, we can be bros. So I was kind of like, yeah. Right away, Nate had a couple of remarks and started going off to Kara. And I felt like it was directed to me. And then uh, all of a sudden he makes his smart remarks saying, you know, these MMA guys think they're superstars. So right away at that point I knew it was towards me. So I'm, I'm like, oh, what's up? You know, like, you have a problem, just let me know. So I turned back and looked at Kara and I was like, Kara, it looks like shit's about to hit the fan. With the cameras turned off, Mike and Nate's bickering escalates quickly and they nearly come to blows. The cameras aren't rolling again until after the two of them have been separated. Mike. Got in front of uh, our apartment, and as soon as we got out of the van, you know, there's no cameras around, no people around, and I went up to him like a man, one on one, and I was, I was very frustrated. I was very upset. Basically, ran up on me from behind and started talking a lot of shit. Instead of like being a man and talking about it, he's still trying to act all like gangster and hard. So right away, that gives me the impression like, okay, if this is a fight and that's how I feel, I'm, I'm putting my guard up, and you know that's what I did. Does it feel like if you want to play like this? I know. I know. Okay, go upstairs. Leave the door open, okay? Kara sends Nate upstairs, while Mike tries to compose himself on the street. 
You know, I told him to go upstairs and take the keys and just relax for a second. It doesn't matter, because next time we train, I'm gonna beat the fuck out of him anyway, so it doesn't matter if it's in the street or in the gym. Like, I'm gonna break it, it doesn't matter who's there. So, if he thinks he's gonna fight on Friday, he'll probably have a broken arm, so good luck. I'm, I'm in game mode until it happens, that's it. I'm not gonna pull down and like, let this fucking faggot try and get a cheap shot on me. If I, if I beat the shit out of him tonight and break something, it's gonna happen to me. You want me to live in a just might as well put us two in a fucking cage and see what happens. We're living here for a week. You think we're not gonna argue again? You think people aren't gonna be around? We're gonna brawl? Or if I'm fucking sleeping on my bed and this fag wants to come and hit me, uh, I'm fucking here. I have to fucking pay my own fucking shit for my fuck my bills for my internet. Cause I don't have my internet. I, I gotta fucking do my own shit. I'm away from fucking people I love in my own training camp. I go fucking put myself at risk for other fucking people. And this is the shit that happens. Like, fuck it. Fight is. This guy's not here to train, man. It's either me or him. Like, I can't be in the same house as this guy no more because I don't play that shit. And honestly, like, if bad comes to worse, some serious shit will happen to me at that house. I'm gonna go up there and no one's gonna stop me. I'm gonna get my bags and no one's gonna stop me. I'm gonna leave my shit upstairs and fucking fag. You fucking nigger. I'm gonna go rob all my fucking shit. Yo, I'm gonna fucking kill this nigger, bro. I'm gonna kill this fucking black man. He's just fucking running his mouth, bro, like a fucking faggot, bro. Like, I'm gonna beat the fuck out of him. Like. <laughs> I'm gonna just like. I don't wanna go with guys. You know, I don't wanna go with everyone. Kara and Nate go for a walk on the beach while Mike prepares to leave the apartment. What is that, bro? Get out of here. Your wool? Your collars, man. Huh? Your guns. Faggot. Piece of shit. Shoes. <laughs> That's where I thought you were going, you know. I don't know yet. You know? I don't know. If I see him at the gym, I'm gonna beat him up at the gym. Like, you know. Yeah, I'm gonna break his arm. You know? Okay. No, no. You just don't need 20 feet with the guy. 20 feet? They're my, my team partners. I might even go home, you know? Like Canada. Me? Where? Me. Now? Tomorrow, today? Don't go away. Don't need. Don't be the opportunity. <laughs> I'm going to opportunity for you. What's the opportunity? Nah. I have, you I have a fight in April, you know? Mm, that's better for you because you, you have it. one more week for training with the guys. Good training, good jiu-jitsu, good... Everything good. The team that I train with is good too. These guys, they're no good. Hey man, they're the best gym there. You best guys gym. I know, but I'm not gonna focus over here, you know? Welcome back to Fox, but I don't know. This guy's gonna be on the other side. I'm gonna wanna just kill him. I kill him at the age. Hey Mike, you, you, I don't think, man. Maybe you'll do never have again one, one new opportunity like that, you know? The thing is this. I have a job, I have money. I'm not broke. These guys, they're here for a free trip. They both can GS? I can come here tomorrow. I can, I can pay my own, I can stay for five months if I want. And that's better for me than being in an environment where I have a headache and I can't focus. I, I, I can fly home, <laughs> and I can fly back, and I can pay on my own and, tra and train, you know? These guys, they want a free trip. So much more confusion. You know, I understand or no? Okay. <laughs> no? Okay, so he is have money, but I don't care about the money. You know, I I think he need to think more about fighters, education, not money. I would love to train here. If if I can't think, what's the point of training? I'm 22. You know, I'm four and one. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm on a good path. I'm not I'm not desperate. You know, I'm not I'm not in a rush. So. I take the best idea and I take my time and I think smart. You know, it's, it's different for you guys here. Oh, okay. <laughs> Don't worry. The reason I wanted to leave was just because I, I felt like I was gonna do something that I was gonna regret, and I didn't want that. So I was, again, I was thinking smart, and I, I needed my space to settle down, calm down, you know, think things through, and you know, like sometimes people. They do things in a split second, they don't think, and then they suffer their whole life for, for consequences. And uh, I'm not ready for that. Next time on 
fight exchange. My team? Yeah. Your team. Thank you. Sure. Like the team that we're working with really warmed up to us. Just move. And when we step in again for a Texan bowl, we step in usually outside. Like, if you think you have to go to the doctor, I'll go to the doctor. Like, I'm sure a lot of these guys here have had concussions before as well. I train it for you, I punch you. I just kind of realized it's a whole life experience, not just MMA. It's unfortunate I can't really fight in Brazil, but hopefully one day I get that, that chance.